thank you. I'm Bill Journey. Um, I do like to dive. I am not, capital N, O, T, I am not a mathematician. <laughs> so why am I here? Really? The truth? No. <laughs> I love taking photos underwater, and this is an opportunity for me to show off. The only reason I'm here is to show off photos and videos of underwater. So, um, but we actually do have a little bit of math. Um, this is a, so I've taken all the pictures. Um, this is a harlequin sea bass. It's about this long. It's one of my favorite little fishies because they, they like sit there and wait for you to take their picture. <laughs> So th they're sort of friendly. Most fish will run away, and they're really hard to get. But these guys are lovely and cooperative. It's a Caribbean fish. Um, OK, so I like to start lectures with a quote. So we're, we're doing that here today, too. Um, so And it is an interesting biological fact that all of us have in our veins the exact same percentage of salt in our blood that exists in the ocean. And therefore, we have salt in our blood, in our sweat, in our tears, and when we go back to the sea, whether it is to sail or to watch, um, we are going back from whence we came, JFK. Um, this, it's a little tough to see because it's camouflaged. This is a Wobegong shark. Um, in the Pacific, um, they're about six feet long, but mostly sort of flat. And this is a um, box fish, a spotted box fish, also in the Pacific. So what do we do underwater? There's a different ways to see and experience uh, underwater life. Uh, you can snorkel. Snorkeling is awesome and fantastic, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, you could do this thing called scuba. Um, crazy people do free diving, where it's basically an adventure, exotic version of snorkeling, where you hold your breath and you go really deep. Um, but you're still, it's basically just a version of snorkeling. Um, and then there's all different kinds of higher end diving that I've never done commercial diving, tech diving different mixtures of fancy gases to try and deal with some of the um, physics problems that happen with breathing air at pressure and depth. Um, and uh, then here we have a, a, an anemone fish and an anemone that's in the Pacific. This is a sailfin, sailfin blenny. They're about this big. And they hide in the coral sand. This is in the Caribbean. Um, but you can sometimes tease them out with like dangling a little shiny object over them. And this is what we did. And he came out and displayed his sail. I guess his or her, I don't know. Um, so, you know, uh, being underwater has with it some of these fantastic experiences. Here's one. I don't, does this light darken the front? Or, well, all right. Um, so here's a little video. That, that, by the way, that's my father, who's now 83 and still diving. So this is in the Pacific. This is probably, not probably, this is, the, these two days, the day before and this day, are the clearest water I've ever dove in. It was like 200 feet of visibility. It was absolutely marvelous. Um, and there are some black tip reef sharks, some sergeant majors, and uh, a bunch of other critters. <laughs> OK, so one question. Why can't we just snorkel? Why can't we just, you know, go to 20 feet or 10 feet or whatever and, and just breathe through a snorkel? Why do we need to have this fancy equipment? 
Um, and uh, so to, to answer that, there's, there's a couple problems, but one of them is based on respiratory physiology, which is a little bit in my ballpark. Um, so breathing, we measure breathing. One, one measurement is minute ventilation. How much air are you breathing per minute? Okay, and we calculate that with a tidal volume, TV. Tidal volume is the um, volume of a resting breath. So typical tidal volume is half a liter, 500 milliliters. And we multiply that by how many breaths do you take in a minute? And average respiratory rate in the textbook is 12 breaths per minute. Okay, so what's your, what's your minute ventilation in this? Okay, so it would be 6,000 minute ventilation equals 6 liters or 6,000 milliliters. Okay, um, now <clears throat> that's measuring the amount of air that you're breathing through your mouth. That's not actually the amount of air that's used in your lungs. And the little air sacs in your lungs where you do gas exchange are called alveoli. All right, little air sacs. And it turns out that minute ventilation, this value, six liters per minute, does not equal alveolar ventilation because when you breathe in 500 milliliters, there's some of that air that's in your mouth, in your throat, in your trachea, in your bronchi, and none of those places have active gas exchange between air and blood. Only when we get to the alveoli do you actually are able to use that air. So the term for all of this volume that is unusable is anatomic dead space. That's that ADS. And anatomic dead space is on average um, 150 milliliters. And so your alveolar ventilation is tidal volume minus anatomic dead space times your respiratory rate. So Alveolar ventilation would equal 350 milliliters, this minus that, the unusable part of your breath, times 12 beats per minute, and that's going to equal to 4.2 liters of air that you're actively using in that resting breath. Okay, so why can't you use, why can't you be at 10 feet underwater with a 10 or probably have to be 12 feet to get above the surface, um, tell, let's just say a 10 foot snorkel. Why can't you do that? What are you changing when you're breathing through a snorkel? Well, you are going to be increasing resistance, um, and we're going to ignore that. We're going to pretend that doesn't exist because that's, that's fancier physics than I'm capable of doing. <laughs> um, and also, there isn't a lot of resistance to moving air. Air is, you know, not, there's resistance, but it's not huge. What you're increasing is the anatomic dead space. If you're breathing through a tube, you've just l basically lengthened your, your trachea or your bronchi. You're increasing the unusable part of your breath. Okay, so in order to understand that influence of the snorkel, we have to be able to measure the volume of a cylinder. Does anyone know? 
how we get the volume of a cylinder. Pi r squared h. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. It's pi r squared times the height or length of that cylinder. So um, fortunately for me, the diameter of a typical snorkel is just a little over two centimeters. So we can round down to two. <laughs> Half of a diameter of two is one. And yay, I can do R squared. <laughs> um, so we really have to dish, just deal with, well, what is this? Pi. 3.14. Thank you. Um, so the height, if, <laughs> if we want to be at 10 feet, um, the height will equal 10 feet. Um, how many inches? How many inches in 10 feet? 120 inches. How many centimeters? Because we need to get to milliliters or cubic centimeters. How many centimeters in an inch? 2.54. 120 times 2.54 equals? just under a thousand, it's like 960 or something. So we can round up to a thousand. Um, and so a thousand times 3.14, wait, did I do that right? <laughs> what, did I, what did I do wrong? I've jumped ahead here. Yeah. Thank you. What's 120 times two? It's just over 300, it's like 305. Now we multiply this times pi, and um, the volume of our cylinder, the volume of a snorkel, 3.14 times 305 is like 960. So we're going to round. Now we're going to round to 1,000 milliliters. OK. So normal anatomic dead space, the normal part of your unusable air you breathe is? 150. We've just multiplied that by seven. Um, and so in order to have the same amount of usable air using a 10 foot snorkel, you would have to be breathing a three times larger breath than while this is physically possible, um, uh, maximum respiratory rates for most individuals are about four liters. Is about the four to five liters is the biggest breath you can take. That's a maximum. You can't do that for more than a couple breaths in a row. Um, so this is relatively uncomfortable, and we're not adding in the resistance to this. So. Um, the typical thing is you can comfort, the, the typical sort of standard is you can comfortably breathe through a two and a half foot long snorkel and anything over that starts to become uncomfortable. So that's why we can't use a snorkel. Um, snorkeling is awesome. Uh, the Picasso trigger fish, this butterfly fish, those are both pictures I've taken snorkeling. Um, this is a, also a snorkeling experience in the Caribbean. So these are manta rays. They're about eight feet wingspan. There's a snorkeler. This is the same, same snorkel event. Anyone know what this is? Whale shark. Whale shark. This is a small one.
Um, this was pretty warm. This was about 80 degrees, I think, seven, upper 70. This is a big one. <laughs> I had to lift my fins in order to not bump into the whale shark. Okay, so SCUBA. Anyone know what SCUBA stands for? It's an acronym, actually. Self, there you go, excellent. Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, SCUBA. Um, so developed in the early 40s by two Frenchmen, one who, whom became very famous, Jacques Cousteau, for us older people, he had a a nature underwater sea show that showed on public television when there were only five stations on the planet. Um, so most of us at that age would spend some time watching him. Um, and uh, there here I am diving with my dad uh, on a night dive and this is a cuttlefish, um, a relative of squid and octopus. Um, all right, so you're breathing air underwater. What, what is air? Okay. Do you know how much nitrogen? Most of it. Very, very close. Um, air is 78% uh, nitrogen, 21% oxygen and 1% other, okay? Why are we breathing? Why do you breathe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you use oxygen for? <laughs> Cellular, so cells use oxygen, in, Anyone know where, which part of your cell uses oxygen? Is it? What? Because of the mitochondria? Yes. <gasps> Give that lady a cookie. <laughs> yes, the only reason you breathe is to bring oxygen to your mitochondria, and your mitochondria require that in order to make ATP. And they convert, you know, carbohydrates and fats and proteins to ATP and they require the oxygen at the very end of that and if there's no oxygen available they shut down okay and how well do you do without oxygen not yeah not very well a couple minutes and you're dead um, so the reason we breathe is for this we don't use the nitrogen and we we don't really use the other you breathe because of this, and this we consume. This just is inert, okay? Um, all right, so we'll, we'll come back to that in a little bit. So uh, diving has a lot of rules, um, just like mathematicians. And uh, number one rule in scuba, it seems pretty silly, but it's to breathe. And what you really meant by that is to n not hold your breath. You should always be actively exchanging air. And the reason that that's important is because of a gas law called Boyle's Law, um, where the pressure and volume of a gas is equal to um, if, we, if we increase the volume, the pressure decreases. If we decrease the, the volume, the pressure increases. So there's a direct relationship between pressure and volume of a gas before and after um, in different volumes. All right, so when you dive, um, pressure increases, and it will double every 33 feet 10 meters. Anyone know what the pressure of air is? 
one half of three. Yes, <laughs> at sea level, it's one atmosphere, which is equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch. Um, and that doubles every 33 feet. So at 33 feet, you have um, an additional 14.7 pounds per square inch of water pressing on you, plus all the air in the atmosphere above that. So it's twice as much pressure. And then every additional 33 feet, you add another atmosphere worth of pressure. Okay. So when you're diving and breathing through that regulator, the, the pressure of the air you're breathing is at the pressure of whatever depth you're at, the ambient pressure. So if you're at 99 feet, you're breathing air that's at four atmospheres of pressure. Um, so at higher pressure, what will its volume be? It'll be much less, mm -hmm. four times less. So <clears throat> as that pressure decreases, the volume will increase. So if you take a breath at 99 feet, at that ambient 99 foot pressure, you hold your breath and you swim up to the surface. <laughs> oh no. What will the volume of your lungs now be? Four times. Um, and so if you hold your breath while diving and then you go up, then you have expansion in your lungs that can be deadly. Um, it, can, it can compress those, all those little air sacs. You would think of our lungs as being a balloon, but they're really a sponge. And so there's lots of stuff inside of those lungs that can get damaged when we're expanding that volume of air. Um, so you have to breathe. Um, this is a nudibranch. Um, a nudibranch is a sh uh, shellless snail, a marine mollusk. And they are, some of them are just absolutely brilliant colored. Whenever I think of breathing and diving, there's this one dive I did that just sort of took my breath away. Um, and it's this dive. There were so many fish. I mean, there was everywhere you turned, there was a school of fish at least this dense. And then while we're sitting there watching these, these two uh -huh. manta rays come in. Where was this? Uh, this was in the Maldives, mm -hmm. in the Pacific, in the Indian Ocean. And then they circled. Some parts of this where there are so many fish in front of me, I could barely see. The manas. So um, another issue with diving is you have to breathe because air expands when you go to lower pressure. The, another issue is decompression sickness, um, which is commonly known as the bends. And this has to do with a different gas law called Henry's law, where uh, at higher pressure, um, more gas gets pushed into uh, fluids like blood and tissues. And again, most of air is nitrogen, which we don't use. 
the oxygen we use. So we're also pushing in more oxygen into the blood and the tissues, but our cells are consuming it. So the oxygen isn't really an issue. It's the nitrogen that is a problem with the bends. So you're at depth. Pressure is pushing nitrogen into your blood and into your tissues. And then you come up. Well, if you come up too quickly, that nitrogen will converge and form bubbles and come out rapidly, basically like uncorking a champagne bottle. And you get these bubbles that burst out of that. They travel in the blood and get stuck where? In the joints. They can get stuck in small blood vessels of the lungs and you get air embolisms. Um, and cause all types of variety of symptoms. They get stuck under the skin and you get skin rashes. Um, so a bunch of different symptoms. So the longer and deeper you are at the underwater, um, the more nitrogen you accumulate. And in order to safely let it degas without bursting into bubbles, you have to ascend at a slow rate. Um, and here's a cardinal fish in the Pacific. Um, so in order to dive safely, um, divers have developed, and most of this was done by the US Navy um, in the early or late 40s, early 50s, with testing they did, and people died and got the bends and all sorts of stuff. But um, these are the dive tables. And this is what I learned way back when, pre-dive computer. Now people use dive computers that do all these calculations for them. And they're a little bit more sophisticated than this table. But if you dive to 90 feet, you have a limit of 25 minutes. Um, and if you spend these other times at 90 feet, then you, can, you have less nitrogen buildup. Um, you calculate how long you sit at the surface to degas before you do your next dive, and your limits are changed. And I don't want to go through all that, but um, that sort of feels like math to me. <laughs> uh, a lionfish um, in the Pacific, where they belong, and a seahorse in the Caribbean. Um, one more little video. I got, I think I had about a minute left. This is a cuttlefish. Aww. Keep an eye on it. <laughs> it's about this big, about a foot long. Watch it again. It's going to get a little startle. They can rapidly wow. change colors like that. All right, a couple of favorite critters. Here's a frogfish. This is a um, um, peacock mantis shrimp. They're about this long. Um, and a wonder puss. It's a type of octopus that has these undulating waves of color up and down its legs. And that's it for scuba man. <laughs>
or the whole 10 minutes at that depth. Um, now the, the dive computers with real math um, re constantly recalculate that, so it is a little safer, but yes. Yeah? What is the other one you said? Oh, gas. Of gas, Randy. Randy, what's the other one for gas? Tip of the argon. And there'd be some carbon dioxide in there, and yeah, but very small. Maybe 0.2% of that 1% is CO2, yeah? And then the other family members of the gym, you know My whole family dies. My, my brother both, and my mom also died. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thanks for coming. Awesome. Thanks, Bill.